amazing discovery made at the ruins of Saqqara scared archaeologists. While ancient Egypt may already be famous for its pyramids and mummies, there are new incredible discoveries made in this former ancient civilization that continue to amaze and sometimes scare all of us, including archaeologists. The ruins of Saqqara are quite an interesting part of Egypt's history. They are located about 30 miles away from Cairo and are actually part of the Giza Governorate. Considering this area already has some of the most famous ancient Egyptian works of architecture and history, these ruins must be something incredible if they've managed to rattle so many feathers in the past few years. The ruins can be traced all the way back to the first Egyptian dynasty, which came into power after the initial unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. The first Egyptian dynasty is said to have reigned from 3100 BC to 2900 BC and took place in the Bronze Age. Saqqara gained popularity as a necropolis in ancient Egypt, and if you didn't know, a necropolis is basically a glorified cemetery. As a result, numerous pharaohs, royals, and nobles have been buried there, and it's even home to its own pyramid, the Pyramid of Djoser, built to house the body of Djoser, a king from the Third Egyptian Dynasty. This may be the largest pyramid in Egypt that's located outside the Giza complex, and it's quite unique as it's a step pyramid rather than the flat ones we're used to in Egypt. There are two other pyramids in the area, the Pyramid of Unas, which unfortunately isn't very well preserved, and the Pyramid of Userkaf, which is in better condition than the Pyramid of Unas, but is still in some pretty rough shape. Very close to these pyramids is one of the oldest known stone structures in history, the Gisr el Mudir. Surprisingly, this structure survived all this time because of the poor quality materials used to build it. More expensive structures with valuable materials were often looted over time and stripped of all their integrity. Since the stone used in the Gisr al Mudir was readily available and cheap, no one thought to loot this structure in the first place. This structure is clouded with mystery, as no one knows its purpose, why it was built, or even who built it. There isn't even a date given for when it could have been made but it's said to predate every single structure in the area. Since the Egyptian revolution and political crisis in the early 2010s, Egypt has seen a massive decrease in tourism. Since then, things have stabilized quite a bit, and the Egyptian government is working tirelessly to bring some life back into their tourism industry. One approach they've taken is to not just focus on the existing iconic structures of the ancient Egyptian empire, but also to find new icons to boost the industry. The ruins of Saqqara were an ideal site for archaeologists to get started, but the things they found in these ruins over the past decade have also been nothing short of shocking. In 2011, while a team of archaeologists was working on the ruins, they found over 8 million dead animals near a temple dedicated to Anubis, the Egyptian god of death. The dead animals included livestock like cows and goats, but the vast majority of them were dogs. It was common to bring dead dogs towards the Temple of Anubis as an offering, and it was believed that these dogs went straight to the protection of Anubis himself. However, they discovered something much more sinister behind these offerings. There was simply no way they could have gotten 8 million dogs in such a small area. This was bigger than the population of every city on Earth at the time, they concluded that this must have been the result of the world's oldest puppy mill, where dogs were bred and then killed in order to be given as an offering to Anubis. While this might sound horrible to us, and it most definitely is, according to Salima Ikram, who was the leader of this excavation, the Egyptians believed that the dogs were going to a better place with Anubis. Another missing puzzle piece of Egyptian history was also recently discovered at the ruins of Saqqara, when in 2019, a team of Czech archaeologists discovered a huge and lavishly decorated 4,000-year-old tomb in the ruins. The name of the person in the tomb was identified as Kui, and he was a pretty big deal when he was alive. He was most likely a friend or companion of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Djedkare Isesi, who was the eighth ruler of the fifth Egyptian dynasty. His tomb was found very close to the pyramid of Djedkare Isesi, which was strange because no other tomb from that era was found that close to his. There were also a lot of perfectly preserved paintings found in the corridor that leads to his final resting place. You would have to be extremely rich and powerful to be able to deserve a tomb like that. 
Yet we don't know anything about this man at all, despite apparently being very close to the pharaoh. A year later in 2020, archaeologists found the biggest discovery on the site to date, and by far the most significant one. They found over 100 perfectly preserved coffins that were sealed shut and decorated by extremely detailed works of art that can tell us more about the history of that era. There were also about 40 funeral statues found in the same area, which were usually reserved for high-ranking members of the royal family. This led to the conclusion that Saqqara was the main burial ground for all members of the 26th dynasty, which goes to show just how long this location was used considering it has existed since the very first Egyptian dynasty. Some of the tombs were opened, such as the one belonging to a very wealthy 40-year-old man. His wealth was determined by the fact that he clearly didn't get much movement or sun exposure and he had a very weak bone structure something that was quite common among the ancient Egyptian elite. At the same time, archaeologists discovered an entire family buried in one coffin. The cause of their deaths was apparently malaria. Earlier this year, another cache of sarcophagi and burial shafts was discovered, with about 50 of each. These were believed to be from the time of the New Kingdom, and along with these, some writings were also discovered written on papyrus. The papyrus was about 13 feet long and contained some important text from the Book of the Dead, something that was read at every funeral. There were also various funerary items found at the site such as amulets, funeral masks, and canopic jars. There was likely some sort of religious significance attached to the ruins of Saqqara, which is why so many royals from the First Dynasty to over a thousand years later chose to be buried in this specific spot. Saqqara is also famous for some not as scary artifacts. The Saqqara bird is considered by some to be the greatest ancestor of the airplane. It seems to be a toy that's made to resemble a bird. However, the dimensions, wingspan, tail, and ratios are strikingly similar to modern-day airplanes. This goes to show that if they had the resources available and the empire lasted long enough in peace, ancient Egyptians might have been able to crack the code on how to make their own airplane or perhaps find a way to manually achieve human flight. Since some of the basics of aviation were found in the Saqqara bird, some physicians like Khalil Messiah were so impressed by the design that they suggested ancient Egyptians had to have built their own airplanes, and the Saqqara bird was simply a model of a planned or existing aircraft. However, there has never been anything close to one being found there. And had it been used, we're pretty sure someone would have documented it in art or text. Saqqara is also home to one more incredible discovery among others, and that's the ancient Saqqara tablet. The Saqqara tablet was made sometime during the 20th dynasty of Egypt, which was famous for the rule of King Ramesses II, considered the greatest Egyptian pharaoh of all time. It was discovered by modern-day historians who were shocked to find the work of an ancient historian. The tablet contained the names and symbols of all the pharaohs from the first Egyptian dynasty all the way to the 20th Egyptian dynasty, which is when this tablet was made. This discovery was nothing short of spectacular considering we knew almost nothing about many of these kings at the time, and it gave us more pointers to finally start looking for them. Overall, the tablet had space for 58 names up until Ramses II, but 14 of these names were damaged to the point where they were indecipherable. And that's a wrap for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.